All right, KISS Army, welcome to the KISS FAQ Podcast. Thank you for giving us your time today and letting us into your head. I hope we don't do any damage. This is a KISS-related podcast by the board for the board. We hope that you enjoy. Welcome to episode 285 of the KISS FAQ Podcast, or is it... Ooh, the look, it's rock and roll podcast. I might be changing up the name to this show so we, we can talk about some kiss related bands and some completely unrelated bands as we move forward into year, what is it, year six? Why are we going to talk about unrelated bands? Unrelated to kiss bands. Oh, okay. <laughs> because I know everyone is just dying to do another episode on Zodiac Mind Warp. I don't, I don't know what that is. Oh. Yeah, well, shame on you. Where were you in the? Where were you in 1987? Shitting my pants. <laughs> so not not much has changed. Not much has changed. <laughs> All right, let's uh, just get through some of the news and the headlines. Ace Freely on TMZ. Drama mm-hmm. follows the spaceman wherever he goes. He oh, yeah. was briefly single again and is now unsingle again, and apparently Mr. Schmeckelhead McGinty yeah. uh, is uh, in, a, in a happier place, but according to TMZ, there is misery in the background, so whatever. Mm. That's people's personal lives and um, a, just a train wreck to watch. I have no comment on it. Um, you know what I find interesting is you know, in this community, there's a lot of talk about, um, you, you know, things that go on in KISS members' lives, whether it's Paul, Gene, Ace, or Peter. There's, like, a lot of focus on that. I mean, with me, I was never I, I was never about that. I never wanted to know about Paul's sister or this love child or what's – I just – I never, I never, ever looked into that stuff. It was just always about the band and in the music for me. So when I see a TMZ headline about Ace trying to get his things back, I'm just like, I – Scroll past it. Well, I it, think Kiss Kiss fans are starving for news. You know, yeah. there hasn't been an, an album or anything for years, so they they like take anything they can get, and a story I like agree. this will get some. You know, at least it's something. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's that's it too. I mean, you know, if there was if there was other news more worthy to you know talk about, you know, I'm sure we would rather talk about that. But unfortunately. What else is there at this point? Yeah, yeah. yeah for there forty-five the... seconds, there had been no Bob Kulick story, so you know, that that <laughs> filled that filled a void for a few moments. There's so I think many... it's kind of it's so cool with Bob Kulick because I have friends who, who they don't listen to Kiss, but they've listened to the Bob Kulick interviews. So <laughs> yeah, because he's kind of going mainstream. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. there's so many other things. There's so many other things to to focus on than that. Yeah, yeah. That's, well, that's, the, uh, the next colored vinyl. Yeah. Yeah, which, which is a great a great segue into part two. It's it's Black Friday. It is Record That's Store racist. Day. I want to I want to talk about Record Store Day first because I've just downloaded Mark's Record State Record Store Day single, and Mark, I've managed to have one listen to it before coming on the air, and that was the uh, the B side. And yeah. wow, that is a fantastic song. Congratulations, well done, and uh, I heartily recommend it to anyone. I'd started listening to the A side, which is a new mix of a previously released song, um, yeah. and I liked what I heard of the first minute. But I will go back and listen to that later. But the B side, wow, great song, nicely done, and nice bit of Getty Lee type bass playing in there is what jumped out at me a bit. That was kind of my takeaway. It's like, oh, it's a little Getty ish. So uh, excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate the kind words. And before I talk about that, I also have to thank uh, Mr. Andrew there, because when uh, he was on the Kiss Room, yeah. Oh, yeah. They, he, they played uh, Charisma, my cover that I did when as part I of the bonus, the bonus songs for the uh, Man of Science album. And uh, he, Andrew had a lot of nice things to say about it, so I wanted to thank him personally for you know, talking about it and my pleasure. saying those things. My so, pleasure. You never accused me of killing cats or, or anything like that. So anything I can do to support you, uh, I'm there. 
<laughs> Thanks, dude. I mean, I, re- I really did appreciate it, though, because, you know, it's, you know, you don't get too many chances, especially on a show that's so really specific to KISS stuff. So luckily, I did have a KISS cover, right, that they could play on that show. So that was really, you know, a nice way for them to kind of segue into this album that I just released now, which was the, uh, you know, book one uh, in the year 3073. Uh, but for, for Record Store Day, I decided to add uh, that one song. And I also put in that other song, the one that uh, that Julian was talking about. Uh, and that was written also during the same time as that, as this album was. But because the, sto- the story of the lyrics was kind of really, really in the early part of the story, I didn't want to really include it because it would have been too, uh, the story would have been way too long if I included that part of it. So, but I thought it was a great song and I wanted to put it somewhere. So the B side it was. Yep. Well done. Well done indeed. And uh, by the way, those other covers of uh, those, uh, what was it, David Bowie, Ziggy? Yeah, yeah. And that, uh, that was a... God, what's the other one? I can't think of it off the top it, of my it head. Was, it was Gene Genie I did from Bowie, mm-hmm. and I did uh, I, can't, I Can't See My Feelings by Budgie. Oh my God, that was uh, absolutely fantastic. So hopefully those will get uh, airing to a wider audience at some point. Cause, uh, very, and I think you can buy those at Bandcamp, can't you? No, it's only bonus download when you get the album. Buy the album. Oh. There you go. Simple yeah. solution. All right, let's talk about some other Record Store Day stuff. Walmart, um, the orange vinyl Destroyer Resurrected is there in why stock people, and shipping. Yeah, why are people freaking out about this? Why? I don't why know. Probably, well, out? a lot of people were talking about it on Facebook. I, I yeah, found this like morning. I like I was. It was late last night and early this morning. People are like, "Oh, I bought all six copies. I bought all four copies my Walmart had." I'm like. <laughs> I'm like, uh, okay, listen, I know this could be said for a lot of things, but I'm like, D- don't I have this already? Like, <laughs> I just, I'm getting less and less excited about different colored vinyl releases of stuff that I already have and I had just bought. So, you know, the the the, the silver vinyl for the double platinum, the German one, that was kind of cool because it was different than the than the U.S. one. But if they're just going to be putting the same thing out in different color vinyl, I'm I'm really really sick of it. And he, I know it's only 15 bucks at Walmart. Maybe I'll I'll you know face the crowds and leave the house after we do this. I don't know, but um, I don't know. It just it it, it didn't do anything for me. It it's orange. Work. Daniel, any you know interest in any of these pieces of vinyl? The other <laughs> one that's out is the exclusive um, on LP version of Ace Frehley Live, six cuts from Hammersmith, nineteen eighty-eight. I have zero interest in, unfortunately, because uh, I only uh, want whole shows, whole show, whole shows. Uh, pardon me, whole shows, whole shows. <laughs> uh, well, to me, I, I have, a, have, a, have a, had a hard time buying stuff I already have for a long time, and you know all this. Uh, how do you say it in English? Hula baloo, all this craziness Hula about baloo. vinyl. Yeah, <laughs> about about <laughs> vinyl. Yeah, or, or, or it, it, suddenly it's uh, so good and it's the best thing around. Uh, not for me, but I I understand that some people get into you know the the collector thinking and needing everyone. But I was much more. Um, uh, much more uh, excited about uh, the book that came out that you talked about, Take It Off. I read it this oh. past weekend. And also I read uh, Carl Linneo's book, uh, Partners in Crime, the same weekend. So I had myself a, a kiss weekend <laughs> with some new information. And that's, you know, it's kind of interesting. And the guys that wrote Partners in Crime, <laughs> they're way uh, into g- g- kiss than most of us. I mean, they do stuff that you will not believe so that's a good book and i would love to see that being printed in 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 english so you guys could uh, read it as well it's a very good book it's yeah, very i'd like funny. to see all of carl's stuff done because yeah. didn't he do the uh, biography as well um i, I know we've talked about it because you've shown photos of it previously but any of those titles in in yeah. english would be wonderful i'd, I'd love Just classified books. was in english is that the same group of guys mm-hmm. Just classified yeah, yeah. Carl is like the main Kiss writer in Sweden right now, so he, he writes for the biggest rock magazines, and that's great because he always managed to get a Kiss story into that magazine uh, some way or another. And but this was just the funniest book they ever done, so I, I truly enjoyed it even more than uh, Take It Off, even though I'm a lot into the unmasked uh, or the non-makeup era of the band. So, so uh, yeah. Well, being being somebody who doesn't read Swedish. 
Uh, Partners in Crime, what what was that kind of specified towards? I mean, obviously, the one book that he did was all about the 80s stuff. What was the Partners in Crime book about, really? Well, the Partners in Crime book is really their own story, how they got into Kiss uh, Uh, and mm -hmm. all that. So it's cool, especially for me from Sweden, because I'm the same age as those guys. So it's like reading your own story, sort of. You know, uh, Kiss only had a few TV spots back then. We all saw them, Kiss fans, and made the most of them. We all loved the Tears Are Falling video. It's so fun to read that uh, they had the same experiences. And uh, But then they go way deep. They go to every place in New York that has the slightest Kiss connection. <laughs> I mean, uh, everything from the first place where Gene and Paul met, one of the guys in the book, he's so excited because it was the first one who managed to find out where it actually was. So he goes there, and it's a real rough neighborhood. So he he hurries, <laughs> to, and he stands in the spot for like a minute, and then he runs back. But while he's standing there, he feels, you know, the history flowing through him. And a lot of those moments are really cool to read about. Cool. That's so cool. Yeah. That's so cool. I wish it was in English. I really, yeah. I really, really yeah. do. I do. But, uh, you know, what else this and week? I, I, I just have to add one thing. They sold out. The book sold out. The first printing sold out today. So, oh, really? That, that wow. should tell them something. Maybe just they. Many congratulations to them. You know, yeah. I, I've spoken with them just very briefly yeah. online. Uh, great guys. I support everything that they do. In fact, when they announced that book, I was like, hey, this is going to be in English. And he says, no. And I was like, well. I, I have too many things in Japanese that I can't read. I'm not going to add another language of his books I can't read. Well, maybe in the future some computer program can h- help you guys and read it to you. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, in, in that I case, maybe that. I could get my books, my typos translated into foreign languages. <laughs> that would be great. Or just into the correct language they were meant to be in. Just just anno- annoy people in their native tongue. You know, that's a fantastic yeah. idea. Uh, what other news this week? Um, obviously, the, the big talking point on the message board, and it's the elephant in the room that can't be avoided, is obviously three sides. Um discussion about Ross Radley's magic book, you know, go watch the episode, judge for yourself, you know, opinions vary, facts vary, we're not privy to all the facts or all the information, I still firmly hopeful about this book and the project coming out, Um, I I gotta leave it there, I don't have enough other information to go from, other than to say, there has been a lot of misinformation about PayPal holds on funds, and Mm. um, one of our board members did post a link that explains what happens when PayPal puts a hold on funds. So to suggest that Ross doesn't have the money any longer is not accurate. That is false. Um, But then again, you want to ask a question, go to Ross on Facebook, on the Magic site. He answers questions. He can be approached there. Um, Get it from the source. And also remain hopeful. I mean, it's a massive undertaking. I can't compare the books that I've done, which are all text, um, with what he's trying to undertake with all the licensing and everything else. But yes, I, to be fair to Three Sides as well, there are many questions. Um, I did refer to them as the cauldron of twat waffles. Um, <laughs> for for some of their comments but you know what that's also just in good fun come on cesspool you know a little bit of listen i think i think i think the only mistake that ross made was um answering and and getting involved with all these people on the message boards that were negatively uh responding to him early on i think getting involved in that back and forth so early on i think that's the only mistake he really made i think he should have really have kept a hands-off um, approach to everything and just yeah. answered it through his his official email, his website, things like that. I think him answering and then him stopping to answer is kind of what caused a lot of the the uh, the hoopla on on the board. Mm-hmm. So uh, listen, I didn't pre-order it. I'm not going to pre-order it. But if it's there, if it actually gets released, uh, I'll I'll purchase it. So um, and that's all I'm going to say about it. Yep. I just have to say about the the episode. Um, I think it's insane they do a whole episode on this because uh, there's not that much of information to discuss and I have to say I'm a thousands of miles away so I'm not, never going to meet these guys I think at least two of the guys in that show they uh, have a real negative vibe going on I mean when you watch the episodes you don't feel like you want to hang out with them at all uh, <laughs> they just 
ooze negativeness or whatever it's called negative negativity things. negativity yeah thank you uh, and uh, uh, one of the guys uh, are okay but the other two I mean when they go off they really go off uh, off the rails and uh, uh, I think it's kind of a shame because when they are on they can do some real interesting episodes so yeah well, well, I, I got to agree, and I and I think that uh, what Andrew said also, uh, I'll have to agree with as well, is that his mistake with getting into the back and forth, especially in a public way like that, is not a good idea. Because like, I I do my own records, as you guys know, obviously, and whenever I've had, you know, discussions with people or somebody had questions, I've always done it person to person via email. You know, whatever their issue is, that's their issue, and let's just keep it between me and that person. We've oh, I've always had a good rapport with my supporters that way. And we've always kept it that way. I've never done it over like a kind of a forum where everybody can chirp in or they can see the dirty laundry being done. And and that's, I think it's just better to keep it that way. Keep it between the author and the person who has the issue this way. It can't snowball into something massive, you know? Yeah. And mm -hmm. just remember the agenda, you know, this is this, you know, I watch a lot of episodes of three sides. Um, I'll just put that straight out there. Some I agree with, some that I don't. It's their opinions. You know, they are always very careful to strike, stress that these are our opinions. And that's what listeners sometimes forget, that just because they are opinions doesn't make them factual, doesn't make them correct. They can be educated. That certainly they can be educated from experiences that each one of them have. Um, but again, you know, I think Ross has kind of mismanaged this to a certain extent, which is very unfortunate as the optics uh, are simply not good. So, you know, it is it is what it is. You know, what's my agenda? You know, you have to ask yourself that when you're listening to what I'm saying. Do I have an agenda against, you know, Michael and Tommy and Mark and Lisa? No, I don't actually. Oh, and Izzy? Well, whoever that is. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you know, I, I just, you know, I'm putting it out there that, you know, obviously it's gotten a lot of attention this week. Make your own judgments. You know, I want to continue supporting Ross. I want to see this book happen. Um, and I, again, I pre-ordered. So we'll see what happens. You know, it's it's just a shame that they've obviously have denigrated him on many episodes, made magic the butt of many a joke, just like they have with the cesspool. So you have to wonder what that agenda is. So let, let's leave that there and get into more interesting stuff about, you know, what's been going on lately. Yes. Um, well, before we touch on that, you know, first question is, it's been the anniversary of Eric Carr's passing. You know, it's always nice to look back and celebrate the Fox, who was the drummer in Kiss when I became a fan. You know, what do each of you remember about Eric's passing and how you found out and, you know, how you felt as a Kiss fan that here was a 41-year-old person dying? Um, Andrew, uh, I think as the youngest. Well, um, I had just become a fan in 1988, 89. So I, I wasn't very, I was six years old in 1991. So I really didn't understand any of this. I, I didn't understand. So, but when he passed, I had a newspaper article, just like a newspaper clipping that my mom had cut out. And she was like, here, he, Eric Carr passed away. And I had that clipping for a really long time. And one of my moves, I, I misplaced it. So I don't have it anymore. But I knew about it. And um, I really didn't feel the effects of it until much later once I got into music a little more and, and wanted to play drums like Eric. So, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things where he is death is completely overshadowed by the, the passing of Freddie Mercury because Freddie Mercury was much more of an icon in, in, in popular culture than Eric was. Um, that's not to take away from Eric or any, anything that Eric did, but people just forgot about Eric Carr, unfortunately. But what's great about Facebook and the Kiss community now is is every time there's an anniversary that comes up, whether it's Eric's first show, Eric's last show, Eric's birthday, or Eric's passing, you see a lot of great stuff with uh, with Eric online. So that's all all really, really cool. And, uh, you know, if you want to take a, a watch of Tale of the Fox, definitely do so. There you go. Um, and uh, if you want to listen to the really great Unfinished Business album that uh, Loretta put out in 2011, I highly recommend you to, to do so. Yep, those are very nice thoughts, you know, for obviously someone who was very young at the time. Daniel, uh, across the ocean and far, far away, your thoughts? Uh, well, I remember uh, the date when, when it hit the news that Freddie Mercury had died. 
I didn't really care about that guy. Who, who the hell was he? But when, when I heard that uh, Eric Carr had passed, I was affected. Um, now I understand how big Freddie Mercury was. But back then he was just a singer of that silly band that I hadn't understood up to that point. But uh, I remember, I think I saw the news on MTV Europe, uh, a brief uh, report on his death done by some girl. And I was really taken aback by it. And then I remember they released uh, God Gave Rock and Roll to You the next, uh, the same year. Uh, and then one of my friends told me, hey, have you seen the new drummer in Kiss? She's a girl. Because there's a girl drumming in the God Gave Rock and Roll video. So I'm like, wow, is that possible? So uh, that's my two memories. First being affected and then finding out that there was a girl playing drums for Kiss, but I check, I quickly understood that it wasn't a girl. If you remember the first God Gave Rock and Roll video, they had clips from the film, Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey, right, and there was, right. there was a girl drumming. So my right. friend said, well, there's a girl drumming for Kiss, uh, but it wasn't. How yeah, cool was that was a, thing? It was a cool video. Yeah, n now, but back then you wanted a black-haired guy looking yeah, blonde cool, hair, yeah. and so it was enough that he was blonde the new drummer well th this but, leads this this leads me to a really good segue where we talk about the god give rock and roll to you video uh you can go on to click t shop click with a k click t shop.com to get a replica t-shirt of the uh, shirt that eric's wearing in the god gave rock and roll to you video uh so head on over there it is officially i don't know if it's if you can call it licensed but uh eric's car eric car's family was involved in, in helping design the shirt and put it together so uh head on over there click tshop.com click with the k and you can get the shirt that eric wore a replica of the shirt that eric wore in the god give rock and roll to you video mark you're working hard with that video for us today thank you <laughs> that is one that is one of my all-time favorite videos by the way from kiss that uh you know in, in 19, 1991 i was a little off the radar in terms of kiss at that time uh, i think it's hard to remember everything's a little bit fuzzy before 1997 for some reason um but <laughs> i was living in a wonderful place called throop pennsylvania mm. it's next to scranton another uh -huh. equally wonderful place um i just is remember it, is, is it pronounced thorpe is it pronounced throop i have no idea how it's pronounced i, I always called it throop might have been true. Yeah, I thought it was Thorpe, too. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's Thorpe. <laughs> My, rhymes are poop, throop. <laughs> um, well, whatever. Back to my point. I was just on the sofa. Um, MTV was where I got that news from. Yeah. And I was listening a lot to Innuendo at the time. So it kind of took a back seat to me. It's like Eric Carr. It's like, but oh my God, Freddie Mercury. Um which is it's just a scale of legendariness. I mean, unfortunately, you do have a drummer who mm -hmm. was not a very visible part of the band in terms of singing and contributions, and that does nothing to denigrate his contributions to the whole sound throughout the 1980s. Um, but Freddie Mercury, that just hit me, because I was really into Queen in the late 80s, from Kind of Magic on. I loved mm -hmm. all of those albums in particular. That was my era that I got into. So we had innuendo just playing continuously. Uh, my friends and I, you know, whenever we got together, cassette goes in the deck. Uh, car cassette decks, wow. Um <laughs> So that hit me quite a bit harder. But Eric, in recent years, you know, the, since 1995, as more and more information about his career, his recordings, his demos, as Andrew mentioned, Unfinished Business, um, you know, Tale of the Fox, Rockology, which, you know, is coming out on LP as well. You know, so I didn't hear that. So, so much more information about him and getting to celebrate his music and his career, including a few songs, uh, you know, like on the, the Kiss box set and whatnot. You know, it, it was just like, wow. And then the Revenge lineup really came in fast and you kind of forgot about it quickly because things changed and then Kiss was doing all these other projects. It, interesting to note, I was going to mention the Eric Carker Commemorative coin. Sold out. Well done. That's, uh, yeah, yeah, really yeah. Cool. I saw that too. I saw that too. That that was actually really cool. There's actually some really cool stuff that uh, that the Eric Carr family is doing with um, w with his likeness and with some of the things that have been put out as of late. So uh, kudos to them and and kudos to uh, to to Loretta. Um, th th it's yeah. just, it kind of, this is kind of a really good segue because um, I what I've been doing lately is I've been trying to get a complete collection of Kiss tour books, 
And um, as of this recording, I have four left. Aside from Return of Kiss, aside from these four, I have every single Kiss only tour book. That doesn't include like the the Monsters of Rock ones. I, I really haven't started collecting those yet. But uh, this is one I just added to my collection. This is the UK version, and obviously it has Eric, you know, it's Eric insert right back there. I was I was just going to show you the insert, so you stole my thunder. So, <laughs> but but you're looking through. But uh, I guess when someone designed these, you know, they they were de- designing them in hopes that they were going to get autographs for the Kiss members because they left you know spaces for that. Hmm. Um, but if you good idea, it, or maybe they just didn't license enough photos. <laughs> True. <laughs> then you turn to the gene page, and the, the gene page has the uh, the attack of the. Oh, face. excellent! I like that. Oh, I'm, nice. I never managed to get a copy of that one. Actually, I never had an English copy. I don't think I only had the Australian one. So. Uh, that's that's one of that's one of my that's one of my four that I'm missing. And then I got this too, the uh, Bruce Kulick uh, Animal Eyes. That's a cool picture. The Brucifer. Yeah. Which is nice. which is which is funny if you look through this. I mean, obviously, all of uh, Mark's images have been replaced with Bruce. Uh, except for the hand, the hand is still, the hand is still Mark St. John's. Maybe it was Paul's. Maybe it was an no, outtake from the elder, cut and pasted <laughs> on, just to see nice. if anyone would notice. But uh, before we move on, Mark, your thoughts on Eric Carr? Yeah, well, it's it's funny because uh, at that time I was playing in this uh, band back then, and uh, the guy who was playing guitar with me was huge i think i must have mentioned him before his name is ted actually i want to give a shout out to ted he had a heart attack actually a couple days ago uh but he's he survived and he's doing pretty good actually uh he's going for double bypass surgery but he's doing pretty good so uh thinking of you ted anyways but he's the one who's got me back into kiss back when we started jamming together and i remember when i went to his house that day it looked like a member of his family had passed when I walked into the house. Like, what's going on, man? He goes, you didn't hear? I go, no, Eric Carr passed. And he was like, he was, it really shook him hard. I mean, uh, it it affected me as well, right? But I mean, he like totally like was living and breathing Kiss. He had like his whole living room was covered with Kiss stuff, like framed posters. Like his wife had absolutely zero say on the decorative decorative part of their house. It was all Kiss stuff. Like, then the, the she, she had... Oh, yeah, and she had to like it, and she didn't mind because she liked Kiss, too, but, you know, she just was, you know, as long as he was happy, then I guess she was happy. But um, the th- the thing was that it it did affect a lot of people in our circle. I, I do remember that, and it was the complete opposite for us. Like, for when we heard that Freddie Mercury had passed, we were kind of like, oh, that's too bad, but it never really had any effect on us because we weren't, in, we weren't listening to Queen at all at that time. At least I wasn't. You know, so it was a sad thing to hear that they that he had passed, right? And I mean, I was aware of Queen, obviously, and all the hits and stuff. But you know, back then it was definitely more focused around Eric Carr. So it it did it did hit me to a point, but you know, definitely not as much as my friend Ted. Yeah, now that most of us are in our forties, except for one on this panel, yeah, <laughs> it, it it hits you even more each year. You know, so it's it's great to keep his memory alive. All right, let's jump into, I guess, what we'll, we'll call the main section of the show today. And uh, it's Ace. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What? What? What Black did I forget Friday. now? Black Friday. What about it? Oh, there shit. Is. You're right. It is Black Friday. And <laughs> yes. uh, you've been on some of the websites today looking at deals. So what, what are some of the great things that have jumped out at you? Uh, just uh, run through it. All right, so the first one really pissed me off. Because Hot Topic now has the uh, brand new uh, reproduction of the 10th anniversary Creatures of the Night shirt, which was being sold on the End of the Road Tour. And if you guys remember those first couple of dates on the End of the Road Tour, they had the section called Kiss Classics, where it was these classic t-shirts that they were redoing. It was the Rock and Roll Over shirt and this Creature shirt. They were like 40 bucks, or maybe they were 50 bucks to, to get them. Well, Hot Topic has the Creatures of the Night t-shirt now for $12.00 on their website right now in stock. So you can get that right on Hot Topic's website. Um, that really pissed me off because I bought that shirt going, man, I'm never going to see this again. It's not on, it's, it, and it wasn't available on, on the Kiss Shop or Kiss Online, so you had to get it at the show. So I was like, all right, I'll get it. Anyway, but uh, you head on over to kissonline.com and they have their usual Black Friday sale, which is actually continuing on for an entire week. There is a counter on there. That's actually not the one, Mark. Oh, okay. Well, I'm just going to put up one anyway. It's just a yeah, show. But, that's, but that is one of them. That's not the one. Um, but anyway, so if you log on to kissonline.com, you can you 
and I, I, I urge you to do so because they always do have some Black Friday deals. In the past couple of years, I haven't really seen anything, but this year it actually really surprised me how good uh, – a lot of the good sales that are going on. So if you log on there, you, you get right to the page. You can get, uh, there's sections for 60, 30, and 20% off. You can browse. There's hundreds of t-shirts available there. I did pick up a hot in the shade shirt for 20% off. That's not the one either. Um, but <laughs> you're, you're it says right two. on here, it says hot topics, but they're lying to me. That's not it. That's not it. Okay. It, is that the dildo store that he just went to? It is the dildo store he went to. <laughs> <laughs> Now, there, now, it's gonna, now it's going to show up in his Google search engine for the rest of time. Thanks a lot, Andrew. You disrupt No problem. No problem. <laughs> uh, but there are some really great deals available on Kiss Online today. They have the End of the Road Tour book for 16 bucks now. Um, and it says it's up for pre-order, so like it's not going to ship till March, but you can get it today for 16 bucks. So I rolled the dice. Don't know what version it's going to be. I'm going to get it. The other tour book sounds, they have for sale. Sounds like it's going to be the third edition, which has some changes What to just to the tour personnel. Yeah, um, the tour personnel. If it's not immediately the... available, one assumes that it's not been printed yet. So and Maybe it'll be the Japanese version. I, I have a, a friend in Japan who she is going to get me a, a version of the book there. Are they um, doing they... one specifically for that market? Well, here's the thing. There was a picture that was released a couple days ago with a bunch of the Japanese tour merchandise, and it has the English cover on it. But um, I'm not going to make this poor girl look through that tour book to see if there's any changes. And I just, hey, get me one, send it to me, and if it's changed, cool. If it's not, oh well, roll the dice. So, um, But you can get the KISS 40 tour book, Black Friday sale today, for only $6. Six damn dollars. But... Um, but like I said, log on to kissonline.com and take a look at all their sales they got going on today. They have a bunch of really great sales. And uh, that's a lot for me to say that because typically in past years they have, you know, not good sales. <laughs> so, so, so log on there today and just remember, hit up your local record store because there is that Ace record that's out there today. There's also a Cheap Trick record out there uh, Alice today. Alice Cooper. And as, and as well as Alice Cooper. So there are some good deals going on there today. So, um, and that's yeah, it. Geddy Lee? Yeah, solo album. Oh, His but... favorite headache came out on vinyl. Oh, oh. God. Is it, is it a Record Store Day exclusive? Yeah. Oh. I'm going to head over to, to a, my, my local record store after we're done recording here today because I think a lot of the um, hula baloo is going to be done. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the, 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 insane, the, the insane people are going to be home. But, uh, but yeah, so that is my Kiss News Minute, and that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Yeah, I was just uh, trying to check through my spam mail for Sound of Vision. The Universal is also doing deals um, on vinyl for people who want to catch up on that. All right, let's talk Ace. Uh, Trunk Nation interview on the 21st, I think it was, of November. Uh, Schmeckerhead McGinty had lots to say about what's going on in his life and was spraying demon off everywhere. Apparently, there's a, there's now aces into this spray that keeps demons away from him. Um, um, Daniel, let's talk. Let's start with you on some of the topics that he talked about, and you know your thoughts of that interview and what's going on in Ace Frehley's life. Ace, by the way, congratulations on 13 year sobriety. Always great to hear that you're continuing to fight that battle successfully. Well, I think. <clears throat> sorry. I think Eddie and Ace is always a good combination. Uh, they have a long history together, so the interviews often become very, um, you know, personal. And he reveals stuff he that he doesn't uh, tell in other interviews. And uh, <laughs> but it was like he was he has he has found a new girl, and and he was all over the moon, or however yeah. you say. So he, st he started to playing. Uh, did he play a song that he played yeah. for his girlfriend and it was all yeah. uh, all that <laughs> kind of fun to hear because you have this 70 year old guy being totally in love but then you read the TMC report today <laughs> and I, I, so he's, it seems as if he stormed into his old house and took all his stuff and ran out and you know so there's some drama going on but uh, it was quite interesting to hear that um, he was going to release the the next um, cover record in 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 a not so distant future. I don't remember. Did they mention a few of the songs on on the show or? 
They did, and I'm going to go yeah. by them track by track to get everyone's thought yeah. on those in a few minutes. Um, but it was a cool interview, so um, you can listen to it and have some fun. It was good fun. Yep, Andrew, your take on it. Um, you know, uh, I'm just going to echo what Daniel said, especially all of the Ace and Eddie Trunk interviews, and this is going back probably 20 years. Yeah, All those Ace and Eddie Trunk interviews are always really good. Ace is always very loose. Sometimes he gets really silly in those interviews, more so than any of the other interviewers that have interviewed Ace. So, uh, yeah, it was it was a cool interview. Um, I really dug him talking about Origins 2. Anytime there's a new Ace record that comes out, there's always a lot of cool things that are happening around that time. So um, I, I'm, I was really excited to hear about you know my friend John Five having a couple tracks on there. And uh, it's always cool to, to see Ace and, and John working together. And and you wonder, well, is he actually going to do a proper tour when this record comes out? Because, you know, he does these little these little pocket tours here and there. He does like a two-week run here, a week run there, four shows here, five shows here. I would love to see Ace jump on tour with someone and, and do a, a good national tour. If you guys remember around this time last year, there was heavy rumors that Ace is going to be touring with Alice Cooper. But that never yeah. that never came to fruition. So, uh, so I'm excited to to hear some new Ace music, and I'm excited to see what Ace is going to do next year. I think the best prop he ever pulled uh, up on a, in a trunk interview was the smoking flute. I think that was <laughs> I thought that was great. It was on the metal that metal show, and that was kind of cool. Yeah. There's actually a really funny. There's actually a really funny Eddie Trunk interview. It was on one of the Merry Christmas specials, and this might be going back to the year. It's either 2000 or 2001. And Ace definitely was not sober for this interview, but <laughs> it, it led to some of the most zany stuff that Ace was just, he was just talking, just being Ace. It was funny. Yeah, but as this proved, he doesn't need to be sober to be zany because this was pretty off the wall. I mean, yeah. right right back to that schmacklehead McGinty. Um, and yeah. a, couple of, a couple of his quotes really jumped out at me. You know, him jokingly or half jokingly saying, you know, with Kiss, it was one for all, all for one. Now it's all for two and none for two. You know, that was <laughs> like, oh, that, that's brutal. Talking about uh, Evan stanley at the canyon club you know and having a, a nice relationship with him um going into some of the details about the solo on fire and water um, yeah you know that that's a fascinating that's the information i'd love yeah kind of the creative side you know paul suggesting that he'd like to have evan do half of it but you know ace telling paul no i only really want you know a, accomplished people you know, doing that. So he, he had a nice way of explaining, you know, kind of how that relationship and some of these bits and pieces come together. Like on one of the new songs uh, that'll be on Origins 2, how Rachel was thrown out of the studio. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, you, you know, it, 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 it's great things. Mark, you know, uh, hopefully you yeah. have a chance to catch in some of it. Yeah. Uh, but what was your take on it? Yeah, well, I mean... As a musician, I'm sure Andrew will echo this and agree. You don't bring girlfriends to the studio when you're recording. That's just a mistake. You know that, right, Andrew? You know what's really funny about it? Every song is about either getting girls, wanting girls, having girls, losing girls. Every single song. <laughs> However, you never want them around when you're recording or practicing. So Amen. I, just think it's, I just think it's funny. Yeah, so I, I agree with that. And... Uh, but I thought the interview was good. Like you said, he's very loose. Obviously, I mean, like you said, when you're when you're getting an interview done by somebody that you're like a complete proper friend with, it's a totally different dynamic than somebody who you don't know at all, right? So you can be more comfortable with talking about stuff, and you have little, you know, inside jokes between each other and stuff. So that kind of seeps through when on these kind of interviews. So I thought it was really well done. I, I thought it was also interesting that he mentioned the uh, end of the road tour how he said that he's open to doing it but he won't do a like one show at the end he goes if they want me for a year if the money is right then i'll do it sort of thing so again we're back to the money and you know that kind of stuff with it but you know at least we know where he stands right but uh yeah i think that's just kind of wishful thinking on aces end but uh but th i thought the interview was good otherwise you know like he said a lot of things you know he talked about that was interesting you know and uh like i didn't know about that whole guitar solo bit and you know, uh, while it was nice that he talked about Evan in a way, it almost seemed like a. I wouldn't. I didn't think it was insulting, but it was just seemed funny that he said he goes, "I I can't have Evan on because he's not a big enough name to put on my you know solo record," which was like, well, but it's you know it's Paul Stanley's son. Come on, man. 
you know, I would have thought that he would have done it. I mean, Bruce let, you know, Gene's son play on his album. I mean, it's a difference, you know? Yeah, but yeah, but remember, at the time that that was happening, that was when the whole Family Jewels thing was still happening, and, and Nick and Sophie were, were much more of a celebrity than Evan True. Stanley. True. And that's no slight to Evan, because I think, I think Evan's stuff they did with the dives were, were great. And I think uh, apparently what I'm hearing is Evan's new stuff is going to be great. But uh, that's just not a flagship name. He doesn't have yeah. anything, be- and it's not a slam. Just they had that show behind him. So, you know, for, for Bruce to say, oh, it's Nick Simmons from Family Jewels. They were like, oh, cool, I watched that show. So yeah. that's why. Yeah, that's true. Zero freaking interest, which ever of the Kiss Spawn are doing, I do not care. I am a fan of Kiss, not their progeny. Me too. So, yeah. Daniel, you know, what do you, uh, what, what was I, where is I going with that thought? Because I had a had a segue there for a minute and I've completely lost my train of thought. <laughs> I saw a guy fall off a segue when I was in San Diego. Oh, yeah. Man. Yeah. Poor guy. I'm guessing I it a... has to do with his songs, doesn't he? <laughs> Yeah, so let's talk about some of the songs and uh, just get your thoughts on this. Um, Bruce Kulick, and we'll start with you, Daniel, um, is uh, apparently going to be performing guitar on Manic Depression by Jimi Hendrix. Everyone will have read the roadie story, which picking up the bubble gum for an artist makes you a roadie, apparently. But what do you think about Bruce being involved in an A solo album and it covers one of that? I love it. I think it's great. But, uh, and I also like the song. And that's the problem with cover albums, uh, that sometimes they choose songs that you really don't like. And then it doesn't really matter that it's Ace Frehley if he doesn't, you know, do some real cool stuff with the song. But but I think a few of the picks were kind of obscure to me, and uh, I listened to them, and I didn't really, well, you know, I didn't really like them. But, but this is a song that's a classic. Uh, it's not one of the most played Jimi Hendrix song so it hasn't been done to death either so uh, I think it was a good choice and it will be interesting to hear Bruce playing the solo on it maybe they can do some you know trade off some solos we'll see so, so I'm looking forward to that one uh, is Ace going to sing that one I, th- I think he is going to sing that one and uh, Jimi Hendrix way of singing I think suits uh, Ace pretty well I think he can pull that off uh, while some of the other picks might be a bit harder yeah, that, that's a great thing to mention. The vocal is something that A should more than be able to handle. I'm just not sold on him having other guitarists on his albums. He is Ace Freely. It's like, why do you need John Five? And John Five is fantastic, don't get me wrong. Uh, very innovative, has a, a very distinct style. But why does Ace need these other than maybe name power? Because yeah, but you need Bruce Kulick. I mean, it's, they are the two guitarists in Kiss that were there for. Well, you can, I guess, Tom is there as well. But uh, but uh, but Bruce and Ace ha- has carried the the torch for so long for Kiss. So I think it's a nice tip of the hat to Bruce to to include him on the album. I, I like it. So long, can you? Tommy has almost been in the band twenty years. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> I can't even believe that. <laughs> oh, I can't believe Because 2002, no. he was like officially, he didn't do his first gig until February 2003. But, you know, he's been there since 2002. Yeah. We're coming up to 2020. See, 18 years. Yeah, it's... Longer than Bruce Kulik. Mm. <laughs> than Bruce Kulik. <laughs> but you have to look what, what they've done during those. I don't disagree with you at all. I don't disagree you know, with you at all. Because you, know, you the had. The Tommy Thayer period, what is it, two albums? Uh, not very good albums, well, but the first one's okay. I, I like some of the songs off Monster, um, but no, no, I, I agree. And, and it's just, good, it's just, it's it's name power. It's it's yeah. it's it's name power because you know maybe and this is going to be just not a whole lot of fans. Maybe there are some fans that just know Bruce and Grand Funk, and they're like, oh, what's Bruce doing now? I'm on his website. Let's mm-hmm. go and get this album. So oh my or maybe god, they're... that there could be oh, fans out best. there that only know Bruce Kulick as the guitarist in Grand Funk Railroad. Oh, oh what a that, oh, what oh, a concept. Yeah, but there is. There probably there is absolutely. <laughs> so though, there are people that maybe are just going to buy because of that. I mean, you know, he Ace is just. Ace understands, or maybe E1 understands, that record sales aren't what they were, and you need name power, you need stuff behind them. So, 
Yeah, and obviously Ace is receptive to the idea of these collaborations and seems to enjoy it from what he was talking about with, uh, you know, Paul, working with Paul on the first one and some other good stories came out during this. Mark, manic depression is getting you down. Uh, yeah, I don't mind that song either. Uh, Hendrix is, you know, a pretty iconic guitar player, obviously. So having another iconic guitar player do his song would be a smart thing to do. And I, and I agree with Daniel. I mean, it's, it's a smart choice to pick that one because it's not something that's been done a hundred times, like purple haze or all along the watchtowers, you know, just something that's, you know, catchy, but not overplayed to death. So I think that's a great selection. And I think having Bruce on it is a good idea. I, I, I have no, I no problem with that at all. I, I think that, you know, he, he'll add something a little bit different than what Ace would bring, you know, because Ace is very much the pentatonic blues kind of player, and he brings those kind of stylings to it. And Bruce has definitely much more technically to offer from a guitar soloing standpoint. So it might be nice to add in something a little bit there different. I mean, even his blues playing, uh, Bruce Kulick's blues type of playing is much more flashier than Ace's in many ways, but it's just different stylings. But I think that's what's good, you know, adding two different styles. I mean, if you, if you had the same kind of styling in there, then what's the point of having another guitar player in there? So I think it's a good idea, and I, I'm looking forward to hearing that song particularly. Yep. Um, next one, obviously, these are the two John 5 tracks that have been mentioned. Politician by Cream and I'm Down by The Beatles. Uh, Mark, straight back to you on both of those. Um, the Beatles one should be interesting. Uh I've always liked I'm Down. I thought it's a pretty cool song, rocking. And uh, I think John Five will be, you know, a good person to add to it. Uh, again, I'm, I'm interested to hear the vocals on this one because, you know, we're talking about the Beatles. I mean, I, I can't imagine, you know, Ace doing this one too well. But, I mean, who knows? You, you, you never know. I mean, I, I can't imagine him having the same sort of delivery, you know. But uh, you never know. Maybe he'll surprise us, you know. You know, auto tune can do a lot these days, so you know you never know how it'll end up sounding. But uh, politician, I can't say I'm a very uh, familiar. I'm not very familiar with it because I'm not the biggest Cream fan, to be honest with you. So uh, I'm neither here nor there on that song. But you know, hey, I'm I'm open to hear, you know, his version of it and see how it sounds. Yeah, I I thought it was a great quirky off the wall pick. When I think Cream, it's not a song that I yeah. think of. So, you know, good for him going into it. I'm just hoping, again, with all of these, that he has a story. I don't think he has the power vocally to do I'm Down. I mean, no. that's that's a tough one to sing. And, you know, maybe he just wants to maybe focus more on the guitar and has, um, you know, something planned for the vocal. So that'll yeah. be interesting. I always think of Aerosmith. They did that on Permanent Vacation and did a fantastic, yeah. you know, all of their uh, their Beatles covers, which they've done quite a few of, come together. Uh, mm -hmm. Helter Skelter were good. So, you know, d Andrew. I, I'm looking forward to hearing both of them. I was actually a huge non-believer of Origins Volume 1, and I'm surprised the older it gets, the more I enjoy it. I mean, that, that version of Parasite is great, and, and I just I, I enjoy it. So I'm hoping I get the same reaction out of Origins Volume 2 because the song selection, like, like you guys had mentioned before, it's an odd song selection. So I'm curious to see what, uh, what old Ace is going to do. Daniel. Yeah, I, I think uh, the I'm Down song is the best thing in that song is like the har harmonies in the vo the vocals the mm -hmm. harmonies so yeah. how the heck he's going to manage to make that one better he has to do something with the guitar it'll be pretty interesting to see what he's going to do and the other one is just so slow i think the, the cream song and that to me has been a problem from ace recently that he slows down a lot of his rockers i mean like the last single what was it called uh the rocking one with the yeah rocking with the boys if you like, I like that song yeah i like it as well but if you uh, play it in you know a higher tempo like yeah. 1.25 then it becomes really good 
So, so I'd like to see him maybe do something with the tempo in that song, and, and then might that might make it more interesting to me at least. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed the other video, the the video that he did with it, rocking with the other boys, because obviously he changed bands. <laughs> but, yeah, anyway, hey, uh, that was pretty on. funny. Mm-hmm. All right, next song mentioned is 30 Days in the Hole. I think we've known about this one for a while. Cheap Tricks, Robin Zander is going to sing this Humble Pie classic. I'm not a fan of the song, but I can't wait to hear Robin Zander sing yeah. the hell out of it just because it's Robin Zander. So, uh, Robin. Danny. Yep. Daniel, back to you on that one. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm not a fan of, of, of uh, this group either, but the Kiss guys always mention this group, so I guess they have been a big influence uh, through the years for them. Uh, I think he could have picked a more interesting song, but you'll never know. That's the fun thing about covers. It's like God Gave Rock and Roll to You. When I heard the original of that one, I didn't think much of it. When I heard the Kiss version, it was great. So, or we'll the original Two Thousand Man. Yeah, that's a really yeah. strange one. Oh my, how, how he could hear something in that song. So that that's a good point, actually. Uh, maybe he's here. He hears something in this one, and he'll turn it into you know a diamond some somehow. Mark humble pie. Yeah, interesting. Um, it's funny because what the very first time I actually heard this song was when Mr. Big covered it on their debut album. I actually thought that that was an interesting version of it, and then later I had heard the Humble Pie version of it. I'm not not a big fan of Humble Pie either, but Robin Zander's a great singer, so no matter what, he'll take it and turn it into something fantastic. And I think it'll I think it'll turn out good. I think it could possibly be maybe one of the better versions of the song if it's done correctly. Yeah, and by saying done correctly, there's one thing I would really like to see more of, and it's really him sitting down and saying why he's picked each one of these songs, what they meant to him. Um, It's origins. There's supposed to be a reason that these have influenced or affected um, Ace in some way. So I'd really like to be seeing in the booklet far more story about all of these songs and why he chose, say, Robin Zander to be the the vocal player on that, how they've worked on the arrangement, if they've done anything, why Bruce was invited to be a part of, you know, how the collaborations. I love the stories. When you think yeah. of, you know, some of the stuff I've done for the websites by doing song stories, you know, you know how I did a book on it. I love that shit. So I want to read about John 5, you know, how he approached the guitar parts. Uh, you know, Ace does tell you, I think a uh, politician, Eric Clapton, plays two guitar solos simultaneously. So that's why Ace approached that and said that you need to listen to it with your headphones on as it pans between the two different solos. So he's already given some of that story, but package it all up so that people who didn't watch that interview or listen to it, you know, then understand the story of why John Five's on there and how the guitars of the two players are balanced in that solo section. Because that, that, you know, learning about people making music is just fascinating. That's why it's, you know, like with Mark, it's been fun to watch his his videos during his own creative process. Andrew, uh, whichever one I was just talking about, thirty humble pie. Thank you. Yeah. I, I'm not a I'm not a humble pie fan. I know I'm probably gonna get egged for saying that. So I don't have any frame of reference for this song. Uh, but uh, again, my second favorite band is Cheap Trick, so I'm really, really looking forward to hearing Robin and Ace. That I mean, that should have been a collaboration that happened many, 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 many years ago. You know, I think Ace is a great guitar player, and he needs a great singer like like Robin. So I'm hoping that there's more stuff like that on the record. Yeah. So the next song, I mean, so far we've got Hendrix, Beatles, Cream, Humble Pie. That is all out of the wheelhouse of late 60s and where Ace was going to see shows. And a lot of these bands were on the same damn bills back mm-hmm. then. And, um, you know, he's been pretty clear about that. Next up is Jumpin' Jack Flash by The Stones. Again, predictable, uh, safe. This one's with Lita Ford. Um, I will be skipping this one just because it's been done to yeah. death. Yeah, I'm I'm very disappointed that his pick from the Stones is something just so obvious when you could... I think he really should have gone back to their Satanic Majesties um, and picked another song. Think of what he did with 2000 mm. Man. Go to that quirky, weird album and make something... You know, steal the song completely because 2000 Man 
it, he owns it. Yeah. And that he totally owns that song. Mark, your thought on the Stones cover? Well, I, I agree wholeheartedly that for a band that has such a gigantic catalog of you know albums, why wouldn't you try to just pick something not so predictable? I mean, Jumping Jack Flash is a great song. We all know that, but you know it's been done so many times by so many different bands and so many different people, and you know this is this is just going to end up being one other version of a song we have you know thousands of different cover versions of i mean that's why i think 2000 man is such an impactful song for ace is because nobody has probably covered that except him and nobody's probably done such a massive rewrite of it like he has you know that's that's what he should do pick another stone song and kind of turn it on its head and you know put that out and having Lita Ford, it's interesting because I mean, he's she's been on the the last album, and I think if he makes an Origins three, she'll be on probably that as well. It just seems like this is a person that's going to be on every single record that he does where it has covers involved in it, and that's fine. Maybe he has some good you know rep- repertoire rep- rapport with her. Sorry, well, and, she's uh, just really cheap to get on there as a guest. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's one of those. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those things, but it's you know whatever whatever works i guess for ace works and i mean i'm guessing that he's getting her to also probably sing it i'm guessing besides playing guitar so that's probably a better idea than him singing it i guess uh but you know i, I just still still think that she they should have picked a better a better song something a little bit more obscure well i think uh, I, i'm agreeing with you as well uh this is why we need liner notes or something uh, information yeah. in the album as to why he picked this song maybe yeah. there's a real special reason to as to why he picked it uh otherwise it's just a throwaway it feels like uh, uh i would much rather have seen some real cool tune because mick jagger i think he can uh, you know sing the songs that mick jagger sings he's not you know he not, he's not singing up here. His he, he uh, <laughs> ace could do it, but but I'd like to see something. I don't know if a lot of bands has done, have done this song, but it's my favorite one. It's called "Bitch," and I know Gene said he stole that um, riff when he. I think it was Deuce. He yeah. said he used the riff from uh, from uh, "Bitch," and this I didn't know that "Bitch" has always been my favorite Rolling Stones tune. And then I read that, uh huh, Deuce is you know like a rewrite of of, of bitch it, it was kind of cool to see that somehow i like both songs and uh, he had stolen from that song but so i would lo- have loved to see that song but but uh, this one uh, i'm not so sure about this one yeah you know what dead daisies just did a storming cover of bitch on the okay. last album with Karabi, which was uh, obviously a cover. I have album. to check that out then. Yeah, yeah. and they, they were doing it on the cruise and part of their live set along with, uh, well, they have the Deep Purple Space Trucking in there, which I think is still lying on the cutting room floor from Origins Volume 1. Would have loved for that to have been on. But just looking through their Satanic Majesty's album, there's a lot of interesting material on there. Citadel, She's a Rainbow. And the one that would just be way too obvious to Aceify, 2000 Light Years. <laughs> 2000 in the title come on ace but i guess you know what you know it's obvious that uh you know like i said in my own you know kind of statement that origins should have a you know kind of a reason of why he's covering it and maybe jumping jack flash has you know a story for him so you know maybe i answered my own ponder there uh next up good times bad times zeppelin i guess with Kiss um, and Ace's formative years, it's really got to be something that is pre-73 for Zeppelin, which is a shame, because I think there's stuff off in through the outdoor coda that would be fun to Aceify. Um, Andrew, your thoughts on that song? Oh my god, I hope Ace doesn't sing this. <laughs> I really hope he doesn't sing it. I mean, I'm a huge Zeppelin fan, and it, there's no denying that uh, Robert Plant is one of the great vocalists of our time. Uh, I'm I, I'm interested to see what Ace is going to do because there are some similarities between Ace and, and Jimmy Page and how they approach some of their guitar work. So I'll I'll definitely listen to it, but please somebody else sing this. <laughs> I have nothing to add to that, uh, Daniel. Well, um, of course, I needed to have a Led Zeppelin cover on 
Aces uh, album. Uh, but I was always looking forward to Paul singing an, uh, a Led Zeppelin song. Uh, that was my vision of Kiss covering Led Zeppelin. I, I can't see really Ace doing Robert Plant justice, as as you mentioned, Andrew. So uh, we'll see about this one. It's um, not. I'm not sure it will work out that great, but uh, hopefully. I don't want to hear Paul do any more Led Zeppelin after no. all the bootlegs with no. a lot of love and communication breakdown. I've had my sure, yeah. Thank you very well, Kiss, much. Kiss oh, did Paul Led Zeppelin great. Long Way Down is basically a Led Zeppelin song from Monster. Yeah, that's why it's so good. <laughs> Mark. I love that. Yeah, I mean, again, I think that it all boils down to the singing. I mean, you know, this is something that's out of his wheelhouse, I think, vocally. Um, I guess that was the one advantage of having uh, who was it uh, who sang on the last one? Uh, the drummer who he had on the board. Yeah. Mm. I mean, that's the advantage of having somebody like him in the band that he could have did that kind of a uh, style of singing. And I mean, I'm, I'm sure that he can musically pull this off. I mean, this is something that's obviously is an origin kind of type song for him. I mean, who, who back in those days wasn't influenced by Led Zeppelin, pretty much everybody and their brother was. So, uh, and this is a Zeppelin song that I actually like. I've never been a big Zeppelin fan. I mean, I've only kind of, I only kind of like one and two. That's it. I don't like anything past Zeppelin two, to be honest. Uh, but that's, uh, you know, but that's something from Zeppelin one. And I love Zeppelin one. It's like, I think it's a great record. And uh, I, I can't wait to hear it. I'm, I'm curious just to hear what happens vocally. Again, with, with me, everything with, with Ace on these kind of, uh, of an al- this kind of an album revolves around the vocals. If he gets good vocalists to do it, uh, I think that they can be standout, stellar songs. If it's just him doing it all the time, mm, we'll see, right? Yeah, hopefully it's song one, side one of the album, because you know, like it was on the Zeppelin, I mean, yeah. that just sets the tone for the whole career, that one song. Then he mentions that he's done covers by The Animals. Again, I think we've discussed a couple of these previously. Um, I have no idea what he may be doing by The Animals. Paul Revere and the Raiders is another one, um, hoping it's kicks, but, uh, you know, it may or may not be. And then he, he did mention one of the song, and I think this should probably be on there if it's... Uh, you know, if it's truly origins, and that's Mitch Ryder and the Detroit Wheels, Devil with a Blue Dress on. He actually, in the interview, mentioned that, you know, that was the first guitar solo that he learned how to play, slowing down the record and whatnot. That would actually be fun to just to hear. I mean, that's also a cover. Yeah. I, can't, I can't remember who wrote that. But, you know, that sort of material would be cool. But when you're looking at his origins as well, you know, maybe he can dig into the MC5 and... It, there's so much good stuff. They, Eddie did ask him if he'd done any uh, re-imaging of Kiss songs like he did on the last one. That was one that really kind of stood out for most fans. Rock and Roll Hell was a quirky as hell cover for him to throw in. I think maybe he should cover something off the side two of Alive 2. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that that would go down. That would Bob's head would explode. Bob, sorry. But... Um, <laughs> That, that would be very interesting to kind of hear. Or, you know, maybe something off Sonic Boom or Monster. And uh, <laughs> this is what I would have done as the solo. I, I mean, I'm just, you know, making fun a little bit. You know, but what are you guys' thoughts on maybe some of the other things that could and should possibly be for Origins Volume 2, Mark? Um, Yeah, that would be something, wouldn't it? If he did, like, you know, All-American Man or something like that, that that, that would be hilarious if he did that. Um, but you know, I, I, I never really had a problem with him doing a remake of a Kiss song, but to me, it just kind of seems like he's just going over ground that's already been, you know, done. You know, why, why do that? I mean, Kiss, he's been, he's so known for his Kiss stuff, and really, I, I, I just get the feeling that the solos that he did on those originals, I mean, those are the ones that people always look up to and, you know, revere. I mean, why would you want to try to do that again? You, you, you can never ca- capture that same original fire that you had when you did those songs. I think better le- just leave it like that. Better leave it to, like that and have, have history, you know, remember it like that. And just do another cover. I mean, there's so many of them he can do. I, I think that the Kiss stuff he should leave alone. I think as, as a Kiss fan, I always want 
Kiss songs. Yeah. So, so, so I'd like I'd like to see him doing something, and I'd like I actually like to see him doing something from the Elder with his original solos. I mean, he's been talking about having reels of original material from that album. Ace talks a lot. We don't know if it's true, but if it has, maybe he could go through that material and spice up one or one song from the Elder that he likes, and, and uh, let's hear it the way it was supposed to to be. That would be yeah, kind of fun. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah, you know, if he's got reels of stuff, I just hope E1 did him a solid favor and took possession of them for him so that there's not a mouse nibbling on the reels, <laughs> you know, yeah. eating its way through the uh, the stuff. Hey, what about Queen for a day? Wouldn't it be cool if he came out and did Queen for a day? Um, no? Maybe. <laughs> maybe. I, I, thought this, I thought it would be cool for him to finally finish that song and put it out for us to hear. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Why that, that would that would be a great one. I like Daniel's idea, something from the Elder. Maybe instead of doing Dark Light, going mm. in and doing Don't Run, the original version of the song, yeah. and throwing in all his original solos, you know, recutting them, obviously, yeah. to update mm. them for how his playing mm. style has changed somewhat, rather than just taking the original versions. You know, that'd be a, a fun little bonus track. But you know what? In this interview, he talked about his influences, the Beatles and the Stones, Hendrix, Page, Clapton, and Jim McCarty from Mitch Ryder. You know, and all with the exception of the latter, uh, you know, all of them are represented on this album. So, you know, it's very clear that he is you know, in touch with his past and wanting to celebrate it some way or the other. And it'll be a nice stopgap until the next, you know, studio album comes out. And he's already talking about working on that. He was asking yeah. a good question by a, by a member of the audience at the Rainbow. And that was what happened to the 1978 solo performance. You know, that that was supposed to be you know, something that they were talking about videoing and possibly doing in a theater on a small run of, of a, a tour. You know, I would still like to see that done as well, Ace. You know, with your current band would be fun. Um, you know, obviously they, they were the ones who did it at the, the, was it New Jersey Expo last December? So... You know, it, it's a year since that that took place. I, I I would just love it. And yeah, you know, like he says in the interview, they'd have to fill it out with some more songs. Yeah, why not? You know, do your do deuce, do your your favorite Kiss songs, and tack them on to the end of it so that you've got a full length live video. I think it, we're overdue for a proper live Ace Frehley release uh, from the, this part of his career. It'd be really nice to hear. Yeah, I I agree. I I yeah. I think that uh, there there must be some sort of interest. I mean, look at the record store day thing. I mean, they were releasing a live thing from him from that far back. Obviously, because they don't have anything more current, right? Well, so they don't want to release Spaceman again. Have another version of Spaceman. <laughs> so they had to put this out. Yeah, the tenth color variation. Yeah, uh, but this this time I I think that you guys are right. I mean, why not make this sort of a DVD or a Blu-ray, you know, wow, there's an idea, a Blu-ray. And, uh, you know, put something out like that. And, I mean, the 78 solo record is probably one of his most, you know, noted and well-loved piece of his history. So I think that that's, you know, even more a better reason to do it is because I think people would actually go for it and grab this up. And, uh, you know, like he said, add a couple of other Kiss songs to fill it out. And you have a really good backing band that'll play it, you know, note for note perfectly with them. So I think it's a great idea. I definitely think that I would be old for it. And, and, I, and I'm not one to buy many Ace things. I mean, I get things here and there, but I would definitely be all in for a proper Blu-ray release of this. Yep. Daniel. Hmm. Well, I think it's a great idea. Uh, from the minute I heard that he was going to do a show with a complete 78 album, I was... Um, I was uh, uh, very excited about it, uh, and uh, but it's nothing happened. So hopefully, he, he, I guess if no one tells Ace, he forgets these, these things. <laughs> and the, yeah, because that was one thing in the interview you might have noticed it as, as well. Ace, he he, all the time, yeah, all the time he, he came back to the thing that what's the name? I, my brain, I have brain damage. I don't remember <laughs> more more than usually. I think. 
all yeah. the time he said, I, I don't remember, you tell me, Eddie, you know all this stuff, I don't have a clue. And Ed, Ed actually told some cool stories as well that Ace, um, Mike Sandwich. first next book, yeah, exactly. Fish, yeah. fish Sandwich. Yeah, that was a really fun story. So um, hopefully they'll do something, but someone needs need to help Ace to, to, uh, to do this, and, and you know, he needs some 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 buddies of him his to 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 help him out yeah filet of fish with cheese on it i can't think of anything more disgusting than yeah. That yeah combination. it'll wake you up it'll wake you up yeah. what, what about the what about the story where he rolled over and had a piece of pizza stuck to his back <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. yeah <laughs> or or he or or another time he wakes up he's just like pepper 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 because he needed a dr pepper to wake himself up <laughs> Nice. I'm so <laughs> grateful that we still have Ace Freely around. Oh my goodness, what a card! All right, I think that covers it. That's a lot of. That's a whole lot of Ace. So I have no idea what to call this episode. You guys are going to have to think of a title for this week and uh, message it to me while I put the show together. Um, yeah, let's leave that there. Andrew, <laughs> what are you working on? Anything in the works? Any news? Um, um, where, can, where can people find you? Uh, you always find me on Facebook, Greatest Show on Earth, uh, Facebook.com slash Greatest Show on Earth Kiss, and um, there will be something coming out in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, we had and another I, uh, viewing of that 1994 Wayne video. Oh, that yes, went, yeah. That yeah, went I, very I, well, so thank you, it, everyone who tuned in and watched. It went just as well as, as the first one, so um, the next project is already in the can. I'm doing zero promotion for it. I'm just going to throw it out there. And see what people think about it. Julian, you've already seen it. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it, it, it's coming very, very soon. Yeah. Mark, cool. where can people find you? And obviously, it's Record Store Day. Don't forget to go to uh, Bandcamp. So let people know where they can find you. Yeah, so uh, like Julian said, uh, the single came out today. And uh, you can get it at my Bandcamp, which is just projectgemini.bandcamp.com. And uh, you can find it all there. And just to let you guys know, I did mention in my last video update that December 1st, I will be also dropping my Christmas EP that I'm doing. I did a Christmas song last year, uh, two songs. This time I'm doing four songs, and they're kind of tied together in a sort of short story, which I will explain in an upcoming video. So, But uh, check it out, and uh, you know, well, thank you all for your support. Yeah, and Daniel's not a whore, so he doesn't have anything to sell. <laughs> <laughs> Neither do I. Daniel, thank you for taking the time to join us. Andrew, yep. Mark, thank you as well, and thank you all for listening, and we will see you next time. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Thank you for spending time listening to the KISS FAQ podcast today. All sales are final. There are no refunds. If you'd like, look us up on Facebook or come over to the KISS FAQ message board and discuss the topic we've broadcast today. Don't forget to rate us on iTunes, Spreaker, or wherever you've listened to the show. We hope you'll join us again.